Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to media ecology and possible futures of media technology. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying the CIE exam board as the media ecology topic appears as a compulsory one on the second exam paper. It's important to have a think about where you think media technology is heading in the future. In this video, I've come up with a few key thoughts, but they are by no means exhaustive and you or your teachers, your students, your class may well have other ideas or have thought of other issues. And that's absolutely fine. I just thought I'd run down some of the key things that I have considered. There's been a huge rise in recent years of AI. If you think about things like chat GPT, with, certainly within schools, it's risen hugely in terms of students using it, both uh, in good ways and not so good ways. Um, but you know, in, consider how this will impact the media environment. In the future, will we have AI writing films, making movies? Um, you know, will there be AI directing music videos or will there be AI writing our news for us? There are lots of potential benefits to this. I mean, you wouldn't need a set. You might not need any actors. Um, you know, you don't need to buy costumes or hair or makeup. It would do away with a huge number of logistical issues, but also it would eradicate a huge number of jobs within the media industry. We're also seeing the rise of virtual reality and artificial reality. And it's important to have a think about how that might affect the media. So, for example, things like the metaverse, um, you know, recently kind of created in the last few years and how that's kind of started as a kind of bit of a fad. I don't know how many of you have actually used it, um, but you're seeing some images on the screen here where people can kind of create their own avatars and meet up within a kind of virtual world. Um, will this become more commonplace in terms of how we're interacting? Maybe our interactions on social media will be less about kind of short Twitter based posts that are limited by the number of characters. And maybe we'll be meeting more in terms of avatars and virtual communities and chat rooms. There have been some problems already created by the metaverse. Already when the metaverse first launched, we had a number of people um, commenting about how they had been sexually harassed uh, online in virtual reality. So there are a number of issues that are going to need to be ironed out, I think, before this becomes more commonplace. The interactive nature of the media is something that could continue to expand and develop over the next few years. We're already seeing some interactive media products. Um, so, for example, Bandersnatch was a Black Mirror film in 2018. Um, and it was quite a good example of a new kind of interactive media where audiences could kind of watch and then make particular choices throughout the film that would then determine the fate of the character and what kind of the uh, path the narrative would take. So all different options led to different endings. And this is quite an interesting, quite unusual form of media interactivity. We're still, even though Bandersnatch was kind of a big fad and it caused a lot of kind of publicity when it came out, we're still not seeing that on a bigger scale yet. I think audiences at the time felt that it was interesting, but not something they particularly wanted to do more often. However, we have had another product more recently, Kaleidoscope, which is another TV drama on Netflix. Um, and this is a series. And this, rather than being interactive in terms of making choices that characters can and can't do, this is you make choices about which order to watch the episodes in. The episodes can be watched in any order apart from the last episode. You have to keep as, as the last one. And the rest of them can be watched in any order. And depending on the order you watch them, it creates a different story. So this kind of interactive choice for audiences in terms of how they watch the show. Um, again, it's kind of an unusual technique. Perhaps we'll see more of that in the future. Will prosumers take over and will we see the kind of eradication or disappearance of conglomerates? We're already getting the rise of citizen journalists creating their own news using mobile phones, uploading via social media. So we're getting real everyday people creating and distributing news on a global scale. We're getting prosumers on things like YouTube, creating their own movies, creating their own shorts and uploading those and distributing those globally. And maybe what we'll see is a move towards this, a move towards amateur or individual prosumers becoming the kind of um, most popular content and conglomerate produced content like big film studio content becoming less popular. So they're just a few of my thoughts about potential changes in media technology over the next few years. Have a little think about what thoughts you've had. If you've got any interesting ideas about where media technology is going to go in the next few years, maybe leave a comment below. below. 